Young players who've got them to this showpiece occasion with some breathtaking football. And Chelsea parading all their multi-million pound superstars. The team's about to emerge into the Millennium Stadium here. It's the exuberance of youth against the hardened edge of experience. Well, I'm Tony Gubber. My co-commentator today is Ray Clements, the former England international goalkeeper. A mouth-watering prospect, Ray. Well, it certainly is, yes. I mean, as you say, so much youth in the Arsenal ranks. How will they cope with this tremendous atmosphere at the Millennium Stadium? And obviously, Chelsea, full of experience, have had a tremendous boost this morning. John Terry declaring himself fit, so that's fantastic from Chelsea's point of view. But I'm really looking forward to it. You have to admire Arsene Wenger that he has allowed the young players that have got into this final to actually perform or try and perform in the final. Well, this is the 45th major English club game to be played at the Millennium Stadium since the rebuilding of Wembley. And Arsenal are the most successful team. It's their 10th appearance here, where they've won three FA Cups, one FA Cup semi-final and two Community Shields. Chelsea have played here four times. They won the Football League trophy here in 2005, beating Liverpool, and also won Community Shield. First, the presentation of the teams and the match officials to Mr Simon Davis, the marketing director of Coors Brewers, and the Right Honourable Lord Malwini, chairman of the Football League. Well, Chelsea have already played here once this season. It was the curtain raiser at the start of the season, the Community Shield on August the 13th, when they were beaten by Liverpool by two goals to one. Howard Webb, the referee, the police sergeant from Sheffield, comes from the old-fashioned brand of no-nonsense referees. And how nervous might these youngsters be? Well, that's going to be the interesting start to the game, isn't it? You know, they're one or two of them looking quite relaxed there, Justin Hoyt just waving up to his family up in the stand there, but I'm sure there are lots and lots of butterflies in those stomach in the stomachs there, and... Uh, it's how quickly they can settle down. There's no doubt that this Arsenal youth here can really play some exciting football. But they need to relax to play it, and can they relax themselves in this sort of atmosphere? Well, Arsene Wenger there has never won the League Cup, the Carling Cup as it is now. Jose Mourinho, it was the first trophy that he's lifted as the Chelsea manager. Arsenal's sixth appearance in the final. They've won it twice in the days of George Graham. Chelsea playing in the final for the fifth time. They've won it on three occasions. Now the anthems. Fantastic voice of Juliet Pushin resounding around this stadium with a 72,000 crowd. Steve McLaren and uh, Trevor Brooking in the crowd. Steve McLaren, of course, the England manager. And Ray Clements, who's here with me, part of the England coaching setup. Well, these teams have already met in the Premiership this season. At Stamford Bridge in December, it was a 1 1 draw. Well, let's bring you now a full check on the two teams this afternoon. There's no Thierry Henry for Arsenal. There's no Riziki, there's no Gilberto Silva, Lundberg or Jens Lehmann. In fact, there are eight changes from the side that played PSV in the Champions League. 
Instead, there are two 17-year-olds in Theo Walcott and Armand Traore in one of the youngest teams ever to contest a major final. But this is the team that got Arsenal here, and Arsene Wenger has kept faith. Yes, and the formation we expect them to play, they'll play with a flat back four, and then they'll play with three in the middle and three up top. And of course, Fabregas, we expect, will sit and hold in the middle, and he will have a very, very important job to try and get the ball to Denilson and Diaby to get the ball further forward, and then Walcott and Al Alier to support Baptista. Well, now Chelsea, they're at full strength with Drogba, Lampard, Shevchenko, Balak, and Essien. And there's even a risk of a possible long-term injury to the captain, John Terry, who plays only four days after picking up an ankle injury that it was feared would keep him out for four weeks. Well, Chelsea again, we expect them to have a flat back four with John Terry sat in his usual position, commanding everybody in front of him. But in front of that, a totally different setup. The diamond shape with Makaleli sat in front of the back four with Essien and Lampard supporting. Balak, Drogba and Shevchenko and Balak could have a big influence on this game because he could finish up in a lot of space and causing Arsenal one or two problems. Well, it's a busy period for both clubs there, both still in four competitions, lying second and fourth in the Premiership, into the last 16 of the Champions League, still in the FA Cup, and now to settle this Carling Cup final between them here in Cardiff this afternoon. It'll be Arsenal to kick off, attacking the goal to the right. And this is a final which has produced goals in the past. We could be in for a really exciting afternoon. And here's Theo Walcott, gets a nice early touch. Hoyt, who's playing just behind him at right back. And the experience of Chiori in central defence for Arsenal. And this will be a, you know, this is a vital for Arsenal at the start here. They're getting a few touches on the ball. They're not being put under, under any great pressure by the Chelsea players at this moment. But for those young Arsenal players out there, what they want to do is get two or three early touches, do something right, and that'll give them a bit of confidence. It's a slightly nervous touch though by Fabregas that almost gave the, the ball away. Chelsea press forward here to put some pressure on Arsenal at the back. Uh, Balak too strong there against Danielson and a foul on Makaleli. Well, he is an exciting young talent, Fabregas, wearing the number four shirt that was made famous before him by Patrick Vieira, who's now moved on, of course. Still only 20 himself, Fabregas. And that's something sometimes we all forget because he is so mature out there, he just knows everything and everyone that's around him. And the ball's been sent to him, he knows where he wants his next pass to go to. For a 20-year-old, he really is exceptional. And how will the youngsters in central midfield for Arsenal stand up to the examination that Chelsea will surely put them under? Danielson, who's the other central midfield player, is only just 19. Balak trying to slide it through an opening and he nearly got it through. In fact, the flag's gone up on the far side, it, uh, it would have been offside anyway. Mr Darren can on the dugout side, spotting a, a three Chelsea players beyond the last defender. Yes, I mean, Frank Lampard definitely offside, also Shevchenko as well there, so I don't think there's any doubt in the linesman's mind there, or assistant referee, I keep forgetting to call them that, um, but certainly Shevchenko in offside position there, and no doubts about it. Arsenal coming into this final having failed to score in their last two games a goalless draw against Blackburn in the fifth round of the FA Cup they have a replay there on Wednesday and then defeated 1-0 against PSV Eindhoven in the Champions League in midweek it will be an Arsenal throw Essien who has been playing at centre-back went into that position when John Terry was stretched off injured in the last game Here's Baptista. Hoyt. One of the two Brazilians in this Arsenal side flicked over the top. Oh, wasn't far off being almost perfect for Aliadier. Yeah. Well, it was a lovely ball, but the outside of his foot there. And Aliadier yeah, just couldn't get to it. But Czech was in a good position to come and deal with it. And uh, he's very important, this Chelsea side as well. 
And Diara breaking down that right side from fullback. That's the onus that uh, Jose Mourinho has put on his side. They'll play fairly tight in the middle, and it will be Wayne Bridge on the left getting forward from left back, and Diara pushing on from right back. He'll be expected to pressurise down those flanks and provide some sort of crosses. Well, certainly Diara really is a midfield player, so he'll love the, the idea of being able to get forward whenever he possibly can. And, of course, we all know Wayne Bridge through his England days, but he loves to get forward at every opportunity. Of course, the slight problem they have is that Arsenal are playing with two wide men, and so therefore it's going to be a battle who can push who further back. Here's Baptista to Hoyt. Here's uh, Ali Adier, Hoyt. Here's Danielson. Fabregas, can he pull the strings for Arsenal in midfield? Traore. Runs around Essien, ran into Diara, apologises. It's amazing looking at Traore there, it's only four weeks ago I saw him play an FA Youth Cup, which is an under-18 competition, um, at Barnet FC against Bristol City, and here he is now, four weeks later. Arsenal have worked Fabregas into a good position here, but the cross was too close to Pedacek. And I say, here we are, four weeks later, he's playing in the Carling Cup final, it's just incredible. Uh, Shevchenko slips, but Lampard onto the loose ball. Baptista using his strength to hold off Lampard. Very good put in by Makaleli, who does a wonderful job for Chelsea in front of the back four. Well, what Arsenal have done, we expected Baptista to play up the middle with the Aladad Alzier on the left and Walcott on the right, but what uh, Baptista has done is dropped off the front. He's dropped in and around Makaleli, stopping him from making uh, Chelsea play, and it's left the two centre-backs with nobody to mark at all. And the two wide men are starting wide and going from out to in to support. Baptista, good footwork to get free. Here's Theo Walcott, faced by Bridge. Oh, the little flick back heel didn't work, and the first shot comes in from Fabregas. Didn't seriously test Pedacek. But what it will do, it'll give this Arsenal side some confidence. A neat play there. No second thought in Fabregas's mind when it comes back to him. Doesn't get real power on it. But certainly it gets Peter Shek down on the floor to make a save. So first blood, if you'd like to call it that way, to Chelsea. Yeah, sorry, to Arsenal. And Chelsea are unbeaten in their last seven games since the defeat at Liverpool last month. Chance here for. Shevchenko. Still in play. Cavalio gets there. Essien. John Terry. He hasn't had to test his fitness yet. Here's Balak. Senderos to Toure. 21-year-old Hoyt had a good spell on loan at Sunderland recently. Fabregas, Baptista coming deep again. Diaby, Fabregas. Well, it's early days, but the ball seems to have been in Chelsea's half the longest part and it's uh, been in Arsenal's and here's Walcott Hoyt on his outside Fabregas offering an angle Baptista uses his strength on his left foot chance here Chelsea have scrambled it away Bridge finally getting it up to the halfway line but Arsenal are looking threatening well, what a wonderful, patient move by Arsenal. It's what we know they're capable of him for these youngsters. But, uh, but certainly, Arsenal at the moment are playing the more confident. They're keeping the ball, they're causing Chelsea problems, neat one and two touch football, and certainly Chelsea have not settled just yet. It's a terrific pace of the game. You're on the edge of excitement all the time. Here's Shevchenko. Into Lampard, making one of those familiar breaks from midfield. 
which has brought him 17 goals this season. It really is incredible. He's second in the Premiership list of goal scorers. Only Drogba ahead of him. Offside flag goes up. Drogba. Looks back in disappointment. Well, I don't think he's got anything to, to argue about. Here we see it now when the ball's being played. It's certainly only half a yard, but he is in an offside position, and yet again, the assistant referee on that far side gets it right. Arsenal haven't beaten Chelsea in their last eight matches. In fact, Arsene Wenger's uh, never defeated a Chelsea side managed by Jose Mourinho. Cavalio at the back, here's Balak. Essien, it's Chelsea's turn to give everybody a good touch on the ball. Lampard, Balak. Baptista again back in the centre circle. Long raking ball from Fabregas, and it's a wonderful ball. It was well taken too by Diaby. Ali Adier, good turn. Oh, Czech has to come out and fall on it and smother it, but there's some impressive football being put together by Arsenal in these early moments. Well, it was unfortunate that Diarra there, when the ball was played to him originally, his touch didn't take him towards goal, because if it had a done, then certainly he'd have had a golden opportunity, but his touch, unfortunately, just took him away from the goal, um, and he had a bit of work to do then to get that ball back into the six-yard area. This is Michael Essien. Terry just moving it on to Wayne Bridge. Balak playing in his first major English final. Essien to Shevchenko, who's peeled off to the right. Took his eye off the ball. It will be a... It has been an Arsenal throw, they've taken it quickly. Fabregas now pushing on further forward. Here's Ali Adier. Baptista, has he got sight of goal here? He has! Oh, what a strike from the player who scored six times in only two appearances in this League Cup competition, four of them against Liverpool in the quarter-final, and that's the first testing save for Petr Cech. It's a magnificent save as well, that's struck with power, he'll have seen it late because it came through John Terry's legs, but he managed to get that hand up and touch it away, and that's what Petr Cech gives to this Chelsea side. Some things coming out of the crowd there. Chelsea section of the crowd before Fabregas can take the corner. That's very disappointing to see. Now, we thought we'd gone beyond this in football. Certainly, uh, it's the last thing we all want to see is any object of any sort being thrown at players during a game. There's no need for it. This is a good hearted game, there's a lot at stake. Fabregas takes the corner, headed down by Drogba. Arsenal have won it back, here's Diaby. Oh, they've got it through this time, and they've scored! And who is it? It's Theo Walcott! It's his first ever Arsenal goal! It's his first goal for over a year! The last one he scored was for Southampton! And Arsenal have got the breakthrough early, and what a turn-up! It's the 17-year-old! Well, wouldn't you know it? It was great play, it was from this corner, Drogba doesn't really clear it properly, Arsenal retain good possession, good turn, it's Walcott who starts it, plays the ball in then, gets the return ball here, lovely touch past John Terry, and as calm as you'd see a 32-year-old, never mind a 17-year-old playing his first major final, that is a superb finish. Well, that is the quality of Theo Walcott, that Arsene Wenger and Arsenal have seen and they've been working on. We've seen it in the England under-21 shirt when he came on against Germany in the semi-final and scored two fantastic goals in the last few minutes to help England on their way to the under-21 championship next summer. It's amazing, really, because Theo, by the standards he set himself last season, really hasn't had an outstanding season. He's played a number of games for Arsenal, but 
everybody that's watched him is saying that's not the Theo that we know he can be. But here we are, big stage, massive atmosphere, massive game, and he shows tremendous quality, composure, everything you'd expect from a, from a person 10 years at least older than what he is. Well, you begin to wonder what this will do for Chelsea's confidence, particularly in the battle to overhaul Manchester United in the Premiership. If they were to be turned over here in this major final by, well, it's, it's an insult to call them Arsenal's reserve team or B-side, but it's full of youngsters. Oh, well, it's, it's quite rightly it's full of youngsters, but Arsene Wenger believes in them and, and the belief that he's passed on to the players by playing them here in this final, they're showing him why they're out there on that field. Because, in, you know, in this opening part of the game, it has been Arsenal totally in control of it passing the ball around like they're the experienced side and, and pulling Chelsea all over the show. That's whipped in quickly, Diaby tries to control it, Cavallio gets it clear, but only as far as Danielson, who's fouled by Balak, free kick. Oh, Arsenal were allocated the once unlucky northern dressing room for this final. The first 11 domestic games played in this stadium were all won by the teams in the southern dressing room. There were thoughts that that curse had been lifted. But Arsenal ahead with a magnificent goal. And now with a chance here from this uh, free kick, it's a long way out. But there's a conversation going on. Back heel to Danielson, it's Toure who comes up to strike it. it didn't quite work for them. Chipped in to try and find Baptista, but taken on the chest, uh, Essien. We haven't seen Chelsea as, a, as an attacking force as yet, they've just been pinned back in their own half. And here's the goal scorer, Theo Walcott. What a time to get your first goal for your, your new club, and can he outstrip Wayne Bridge? He has! He cuts it across, Baptista, oh, what's in a penalty? No! The first big decision for Howard Webb, and he shakes his head. Well, that must have been close. Walcott again did tremendous outstripping bridge, but certainly when the tackle came in, it, uh, it certainly was touching goal. It'll be very interesting to see that one again. Well, Howard Webb has refereed 22 times in the Premiership this season. He's given three red cards. Was it Baptista's own momentum? I think at the end, no, there's no contact there, no. no, he's slipped and Howard Webb's got it totally right. Excellent decision by Howard Webb there. Howard Webb showing his quality, the 35-year-old police sergeant from Sheffield. And it's still Arsenal pressing forward here. Walcott trying some trickery to get away from Bridge and didn't have enough space. But he's got that confidence now that he'll try those tricks. We all know it. it's, it's in his capability to do those sort of things. So uh, here's the goal again. Lovely little Howard Walcott started it, followed the ball. The error plays it through to him. And what a wonderful finish. Beautifully slid in. Tipped away with the confidence. And there's Thierry Henry, who is Theo Walcott's... Uh, Idle and mentor on the Arsenal training ground, leading the applause for the youngster. Lampard. Oh, Chelsea just going to have to regroup at the moment. And, uh, well, Drogba there is just changing his boots. Obviously, he's slipped over at you know, this turf here at the Millennium Stadium. Always is very slippery on top. We've had a, you know, a little bit of drizzle today, and as I say, there we go again. Somebody else there, slipping, Essien slipping there, so certainly Drogba has already changed his boots, thinking that a longer stud will be better for him. And the retractable roof is open here this afternoon at the Millennium. And I arrived in the city at 2am this morning, it was an absolute downpour. So if it was open then, and I presume it was, the surface will be soft and spongy. And one or two players have slipped early on. Here's Hoyt. Clearance comes back out to him. Danielson challenged by Essien. Here's Toure. Here's Traore. Here's Diaby. Fabregas wants it, they all want it. All the players in red shirts. It's 
dealt with by McAlealy, and here's Lampard. And Chelsea have still got to put something together of any significance. And we've played, what, 20 minutes or so? We have, and certainly Baptista in dropping off in that midfield to help the other three has made a, a big problem for Chelsea. Now Drogba gets it through to Shevchenko, back to Lampard, tried to place it, Senderos got an important block in. Chelsea's first good moment. But here's Fabregas. That was almost slipped inside Wayne Bridge by Ali Adier. There's Michael Essien. Diara down that touch line. Essien makes himself available. Balak denied possession. Arsenal trying to get another break here, and they still have it. Here's Baptista. It's three against two. Very, very good foot in by Cavallio. Well, that was a vital tackle there because, again, Arsenal on the break, they're just ripping Chelsea apart. All of a sudden, they're a three against two situation, and, and one decent pass, they're in deep trouble, but superb defending 1v1 by Cavallio. Chelsea are looking for inspiration. Can Balak provide it? There's no offside flag! Here's Drogba, and he's level! Drogba gets his 27th goal of the season, the top scorer in the English Premiership, and you have to wonder about Arsenal's defending. Well, they're looking to try and hold a high line there to play him offside. And I don't think there's any daylight between Senderos there and Drogba, so quite right, another good decision, but that just shows the calmness of the top goal scorer in the Premiership there. Takes his time, has a look up, knows what he's going to do, and just puts it through through the goalkeeper's legs there. Well, it's amazing, they've only had two chances, one that was just blocked by Sendros, and in the next minute, ball to Drogba here, looks up, does he want to play it to anybody? No, he said, I'm going to put this straight through the goalkeeper's legs, under Almunia, and it's one all. And now, another test for these exciting Arsenal youngsters. It's game on at the Millennium Stadium, Arsenal and Chelsea are serving up a football feast, and this time there is an offside flag against Shevchenko. Well, Arsene Wenger, looking cross, was thrilled and delighted at the way his team were performing and having taken the lead through Theo Walcott and will be disappointed that the defence has opened up there to put Chelsea back in the match. Balak. Essien to Cavallio. John Cherry. Here's Wayne Bridge. Well, if you reflect, just a few moments before Chelsea scored, Arsenal had a chance to go 2-0 up, instead it's 1-1. Oh, and Traore held off then, didn't think he could get there. Slid in, there's no offside, you question the defending again. Traore has to come to the rescue, and maybe we're seeing problems down that left full-back position with Traore. Yeah, Traore there, obviously 17 years of age, but it was actually Toure that was actually playing them on there. Traore and Sendros pushed up, Torre was a, a good yard or so further back, and that was the man who was playing it on, playing him onside. It's a good ball forward by Wayne Bridge. And suddenly Arsenal are under pressure, Torre having to organise that back line. Well, this is the 47th League Cup final, the seventh to be played at the Millennium. The fourth, under the sponsorship of Carling, is it going to be one of the very best? Early signs are promising. Cross from Wayne Bridge, but this time Drogba is offside. Well, everything is play being played in and around Triori now. Whenever they get down this left-hand side, Frank Lampard's knocked a couple of diagonals, Wayne Bridge has knocked a couple of diagonals as well. This is where they see that the... Uh, the weakness is, and that's where they're trying to exploit either Drogba's out there, or if he's not there, Shevchenko goes out there, and they're testing the young boy every single time they make an attack. Well, it's one of the 17-year-olds has scored for Arsenal, Theo Walcott, the other one, the...
French under-18 international Armand Traore at left back. He's having a slightly more torrid afternoon. Here's Fabregas, headed down by John Terry. Fabregas challenging with Essien. Here's Bridge. There's a, a new spring in Chelsea's step, now they're back on level terms. Shevchenko. Essien. This is Makaleli. It's a foul. It's in play. Sayori being tested again. And this time it'll be an Arsenal throw. It's a bit early to talk about substitutes, but to just looking at the people that Arsene Wenger has, uh, has got on the bench, he's got a Bui, the 23-year-old uh, Ivory Coast international. Well, Abui obviously just played most of his time at right back, has played centre back, but really right sided. Justin Hoyt can play left back and has played left back for Arsenal. But as say, it's early yet, hopefully he'll settle down. But certainly Chelsea is are trying to exploit that area without a shadow of a doubt. McAlealy. Lampard. John Terry. Bridge. Here's Michael Essien. Lampard, Balak. Chelsea's passing is finding its mark at the moment. And look at the space over on that right-hand side. Traore gets there just in time with a very important challenge. No, it was. It was an excellent challenge, and hopefully that will just give him a little bit of confidence because he was having a torrid time there for the last ten minutes. But a good tackle there, and uh, certainly you know, Diaby's having to pull in out that left-hand side to help in the middle of the field, and that then is creating loads of space for Diara to come down on that side. Lampard gets to that first. Ian Hansen in the stadium where we have seen Rugby Union World Cup Finals and Rugby League Challenge Cup Finals. This pitch at the Millennium is uh, taking a bit of a battering in the six years since uh, Wembley was demolished. Interesting to see Arsene Wenger in discussion with one of the officials. Balak won the header, Drogba moves it on to Shevchenko, he's got Turi backpedalling but there's nobody out wide left for him. Shevchenko didn't have full side of goal, and it's Danielson with it for Arsenal, and here's Diaby. Fabregas. There's Walcott. With the spring of youth in his step, Baptista, Hoyt goes on the overlap. to be retrieved by Danielson, Baptista, Hoyt, here's the Brazilian, he's going to get a free kick, slightly fortuitously. Stern faced Howard Webb, who's flourished the yellow card 80 times in his 22 Premiership matches this season, gives Arsenal this free kick. Chance to put bodies in and around the penalty area. Absolute cluster of Arsenal players just standing there on the, on the edge of the D. Fabregas to take it. Still one apiece in this Carling Cup final here at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. Drog the back to defend. Here's Senderos, Danielson. Here's Traore. Everything going through Fabregas. 
the Nielsen. And Diaby has dealt with that, and here's Makaleli. Essien to run from the halfway line. Well, he's going to get a free kick, and the yellow card is out. The young Brazilian looks up to see that he is the first piece, person cautioned in this final. Well, it's a definite foul, isn't it? Essien had gone beyond the Nielsen there, stuck his foot out over the top of it, and as, as we just said a few minutes before, Howard Webb has never been <laughs> to bringing out a yellow card. So, uh, you know, it's not really a, a vicious tackle, but it was a tackle from behind, and he goes in the book for it. Lampard to lift it in. Shevchenko just chips it up. Balak tries to head it back in there, but Arsenal can bring it away. That was asking a lot of Aladier to take that in full flight. Baptista. Diaby. Fabregas. And it's Hoyt. Walcott. Diaby. Fabregas. Pulled down nicely by Baptista. Here's Danielson. This is Traore. He's got the better of Michael Essien. Slid back in by Fabregas, they've worked another chance. No sting in the shot, though. No, on his wrong side in the end, very left side is Truro, but certainly some marvellous skill by him to create the opportunity. Truro with the challenge, and that's still in play. To Danielson. Kicked off by Essien. Lampard. There's Balak. Diara. Shevchenko. It's a goal kick. Oh, Shevchenko coming to terms with the football in England. Mm -hmm. The man looks to be toughing a bit, Ray. Well, I think that's maybe from the little run he had a couple of minutes ago. I mean, he, a tremendous surge and run down the left-hand side, finished up with the ball inside the box, a couple of little one-twos, a little dribble. Uh, it was quite strenuous for him, and I think he's still recovering from that one. Point to Fabregas. Oh, Baptista's peeled away and he was denied by Pedacek coming quickly off his goal line. Excellent goal. Snatched it off his forehead. Excellent goalkeeping. Lovely delivered ball over Pedacek. Good start in position. Always anticipating where that ball's going to go and uh, just snatched it off Baptista's head. Otherwise, it could well have been 2 1. But, uh, disappointed with his distribution afterwards, but certainly. His goalkeeping in terms of dealing with that ball chipped in there was delightful. You've got to turn the clock back three years to February 2003. That's <laughs> four years, isn't it? Apologies. The last time that Arsenal beat Chelsea. 2-1 at Stamford Bridge. Fabregas. There's Hoyt. Lampard's challenge. Well, in the whole history of Arsenal-Chelsea games, the Gunners have enjoyed 67 victories, Chelsea 47, 
50 have been draws. But more recent history certainly favours Chelsea. Unbeaten against the Gunners in their last eight meetings. And 1-1 one, one here in this Carling Cup final. And here's Traore, the young Frenchman. Diaby. Baptista. Nobody out wide left for him. This is Hoyt. In by De Nielsen. There's a Chelsea head that flicked it on. Balak. Now Bridge to make one of his characteristic breaks down the left flank from fullback. Oh, surely Drogba was offside, and he was, but very late before the flag went up. Well, these days the linesmen are told to leave it until the player in the offside position makes a concerted effort to try and get the ball. So, yes, as the ball delivered, he's offside. Is he going to go for it? Yes, he is offside. It is one of those things that can antagonise fans, though, isn't it? Because they don't see the flag straight away and then they get incensed. No, that's right, because, you know, it's probably not been explained correctly to them, but the linesman will not put his flag up now until the offside player makes a concerted effort to actually play the ball. Chelsea playing it out from the back, get it up to Shevchenko, who looks for and gets a free kick. Toure coming over the halfway line. And, uh, part of the old school of central defending, if you come over the halfway line, don't let the ball and the man go past you together. One but not both. Here's Cavallio. Lampard. Makaleli. Lampard. Essien. Balak. Baptista coming back to try and deny that, and he's got a boot. Well, was it in his face by Essien? It's a yellow card for the Chelsea man. Well, I think it started around his leg, but his, his foot certainly, as you see it now, watch his foot slide over the ball, and it'll finish up catching, I think you'll see it finish up catching Baptista in the chest and very close to his face as well. So, again, studs are up, quite rightly, a yellow card. Messian has played in all five of Chelsea's League Cup ties this season, scoring once. But when you look through the Chelsea team this afternoon, they've they've played their their first team in virtually every round of the competition, accounting for three Premiership sides on their way through to the final, beating Blackburn in the third round, Villa in the fourth round, Newcastle in the quarter final. And then as we just look back at that goal by Theo Walcott, a reminder that Chelsea beat Wickham in the semi-final. And Drogba gets his third goal of this season's competition. I mean, very difficult to read the face of uh, Jose Mourinho, he never gives much away. I was, just, I was just thinking exactly the same there, Tony, in terms of you just never know what's going through his mind. Here's... Diaby. Back to Fabregas. Ali Adier couldn't deal with it. Do you just sense at the moment, Ray, that a bit of the freshness has gone out of Arsenal and that Chelsea are starting to pull the strings a bit more? Well, to be fair, you, you would expect that because of the experience and the, the extra strength that the Chelsea side have got. But you've still got to hold your hands up to Arsenal. They are still trying to play when they get the ball. Unfortunately, they've probably been forced to give it away more than they have done in the first half an hour of the game. Wayne Bridge can cross from here, there was no offside flag. Shevchenko gets the header. It's a good chance for the Ukrainian, has been on the score sheet 11 times. Just kept in by Ali Adier. To Nielsen. Traore, the left back. Oh, it's got away from Petacek. It's going to be a goal kick. 
And he's wearing that skull crack as a result of the uh, injury that he picked up in the game. Well, you can see him shout. Reading. You can see him shout for the ball there. Cavallio is in front of him there, and he just takes his eye off the ball slightly. And to be fair, it's a corner. Yeah, Aladier's got the shot in, and, and certainly Czech's tipped it round. Chelsea fortunate not to concede the corner. Here's Bridge. Picked off by De Nielsen. Fabregas to Baptista for a run at Cavallio. Good challenge, he's a tremendous defender. Fabregas breaks kindly for him. Aliadier loses it. Hoyt. Walcott wants to run at Wayne Bridge and he's got away from him. It's a great run. Well, that little injection of pace just left Wayne Bridge for dead. Well, certainly, he's just got himself turned, and once he got on the inside of Bridge, there was Bridge and McAuley there chasing him back, just couldn't get close to him, unfortunately couldn't quite deliver the final ball. Shevchenko to bring it into Arsenal's half. Couldn't find Lampard in the middle, it was picked off by De Nielsen. Baptista lays it back. Traore. De Nielsen, That's Ali Adier. Or oh, was he blocked off there? Referee Howard Webb says he was. It's going to be a free kick. Yeah, he's trying to play a one-two there. <laughs> Certainly, McIlhenny was having none of that. <laughs> Diari was having none of that. Just blocked him straight off. And uh, the other interesting thing, which I've just noticed there, is that all of a sudden uh, Mourinho's sent out. Mikel and also Aaron Robin to warm up and I just wonder if he's not been too happy with the contribution of Shevchenko and maybe at half time he might make some sort of move to change that. Meanwhile Arsenal have this free kick which Fabregas is going to take moving towards half time in this Carling Cup final it's Arsenal 1 Chelsea 1 an absorbing clash that's too close to the goalkeeper and easily picked off by Czech Drogba with Senderos. Danielson's header didn't find its target. Is Lampard. And a touch for Almunia. Walker. Danielson. Traore. That was a poor ball. Picked up easily by Diara. It's going to be a Chelsea ball. Where is it? There it is. Cavallo to John Terry. Lampard. And yeah, Chelsea funneling it back to their goalkeeper. Drogba winning that battle against Senderos, but unfairly so. Free kick. Here's Walcott. To Fabregas. Baptista. Good challenge by Cavallio. This is Essien. Balak. Had to stretch. He's got a free kick. He's also, Balak's been anonymous really in this first half. We've seen very, very little of him at all. You know, the Chelsea midfield's had to work hard to get the ball, but certainly Balak has really shown nothing of the ability that he's got because he likes our space to work and he's not been able to find any. We're moving towards the last two minutes of this first half.
Senderos playing the ball out of his own penalty area. Walker, Hoyt, Danielson cleverly gets away from Lampard. Threads it forward for Ali Adier. It's a great break on here. He's got Cavallio backpedalling. Has he got side of goal? Great foot in by Cavallio. Absolutely outstanding. It was a fantastic tackle, but I'm not sure how fit John Terry is because he got turned so easily then. Had a little stumble. He might have just tweaked the ankle there. But certainly Cavallio, great tackle. Here's Diaby. And again, Danielson. Theo Walcott. Fabregas. Deflected shot. Into the chest of Fedacek. Well, how pleased do you think Arsene Wenger is going to be at half time, Ray, with the way his, his youngsters have performed here? I think he'll be very well pleased. And you can see John Terry is really struggling to get back there. It's an excellent tackle from Cavallio, but certainly John Terry was really struggling then to get back when he's got to open his legs up. He could hardly run. Here's Hoyt. Baptista's there, but so too is Pedacek. Well, this cup tie is very nicely balanced as we move into the time added on at the end of this first half. Arsenal taking the lead through Theo Walcott after 12 minutes. And we will have two minutes of added time. Chelsea getting back on level terms when Arsenal's defending suddenly looked a bit slack and Drogba was allowed to score his 27th goal of the season. John Terry Bridge Essien Balak Essien chips it over the top of Toure gathered in by Almunia Fabregas Diaby Triori's gone on his outside, but he's ignored him, and it's found its way through to Walcott, and Wayne Bridge takes it off his toe, and that passes corner side of the corner flag, so Arsenal will end this first half pressing this Chelsea goal, and with a corner. Senderos has come forward from the back, hasn't got on the score sheet this season for Arsenal. Once again, unfortunately, there are objects raining down from the Chelsea supporters as Fabregas waits to take this corner. It only looks like bits of rolled up paper. Or is that a bottle? No, I think, I think it might be the old Welsh leak that's yeah. flying down. <laughs> Leaks or celery, perhaps. Fabregas takes it. Oh, easy catch for Peter Cech. In fact, the whistle's gone anyway. Well, you do question the intelligence of some football supporters who can't be happy with what they're seeing unfold before them, which is a thoroughly absorbing Carling Cup final. And the whistle for the end of the first half has gone. It is all even at half-time. Theo Walcott with his debut goal for Arsenal getting the breakthrough. And Drogba, the 28-year-old Ivory Coast international, scoring Chelsea's equaliser. One moment of, uh, not controversy, but uh, shouts for an Arsenal penalty, which uh, Howard Webb waved away, and it appeared the referee had made exactly the right decision when Baptista went down in the penalty area, more a slip than a, a push or a trip. So at half-time here in the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff, it's Arsenal won, it's uh, Chelsea won in the Carling Cup final, and lots more to look forward to in the second half.
John Terry is back out for the second half for Chelsea, despite signs that he wasn't completely fit in the first half, and it looked at one stage that he might have turned that ankle again. But Chelsea have made one change. They've taken Makaleli off, and he is replaced by Arjen Robin, which seems a, a major tactical switch by Jose Mourinho. Arsenal have made no changes at half-time. What do you make of that, Ray? Well, I would imagine now that uh, with Makaleli going off, that Essien will play in that holding role uh, in front of the back four. And then, uh, obviously, Robin can play both sides of the pitch, um, so it may well be that uh, he plays on that left-hand side and, uh, and uh, Lampard just comes into the inside-right position, if you like, although he's coming over to this right-hand side now, so it may be well be that he's coming out on this right-hand side again so that they can get the ball out here to have a go at Triori, the young 17-year-old fullback. Well, Arsene Wenger keeping faith with the young 17-year-old French left back, who looked to be exposed a couple of times in the first half by Chelsea. Forty-five minutes of the second half, then extra time, and then penalties if required. It's one apiece in the Carling Cup final. It's there to be won, and here's Robin giving his first touch. Cavalio was outstanding in the first half with some very important challenges. Wayne Bridge, Essien, who already looks to be in that McAlady role, as predicted by Ray Clements. Shevchenko battling for it and comes away with it. Running at Toure, gets inside them, wouldn't break for him. Here's Danielson. Well, Arsenal started the first half of this Carling Cup final in tremendous form, flying at Chelsea. And they pick up that pace for the start of the second half. Here's Diaby, inside for Traore, Robin tries to cover, does so. Drogba, on his chest but couldn't keep his balance. Here's Traore, the left back. Diaby. Danielson. This is Hoyt. And young Walcott. Hoyt out to Fabregas. Chips in first time, it's an easy catch right down the throat of Fedicek, who immediately feeds Robin to run at Traore, who's backpedalling furiously. And he's weaved his way through, and he slides it into Shevchenko. What a ball, what a run by Robin, and what a chance. Well, that just shows, obviously, what Mourinho's talked about at half-time. Here he goes, running at Triori, gets inside him, watch for Shevchenko's run through the middle, and that is inches off being the perfect pass and a great opportunity for the man Shevchenko. That could be a free kick. Essien sending... Danielson tumbling and they've taken it quickly, Arsenal, and it's inside, here's Diaby, he's opened up his body, saved by Pedicek, it'll be a corner. Well, it's an excellent save by Peter Cech, but when the ball comes through, here's the free kick, very quickly taken by Fabregas there, here's the chance, Diaby now in the space there, and he opens his body up there and makes it quite obvious for Cech where he's going to put it. If he hadn't have opened his body so much, Czech might have had it more difficulty, but it's still an excellent save by Czech. Well, he's only scored once in Arsenal's colours, Diaby, that was against Villa, April last season. But a great chance there to put Arsenal back in front at the start of the second half. Senderos. Looking for some movement up front. Ali Adier takes it well. Still Ali Adier. Strong challenge by Cavalio, but it's right on the edge of the penalty area, and it is a free kick. Oh, and it's a yellow card as well. Well, again, it was quite a clumsy challenge. So the worrying thing again is how easily 
that Aladier gets around John Terry, and there we see it. it's a clumsy challenge from Cavallio. He knows it is, he's just making sure the referee puts the free kick outside and doesn't give Arsenal a penalty. He wouldn't have tackled him like that if he'd been <laughs> inside his own penalty area. Oh, no, but I say the worrying thing was how easy that Aladier got around John Terry to, to commit Cavallio into the tackle. Well, is this going to test Pedacek in Chelsea's goal? It's very strikeable, and that wall's going to have to go back a long way. Howard Webb, big long legs to pace out the full distance. Legs that have pounded the beat as a policeman in Sheffield. And they've got another yard at least to come back. Well, is Baptista going to strike this? Can he get it up and down quickly enough, or will he try to go through the wall? <whistles> Baptista hits the wall, which did its job. Well, he scored four in one match against Liverpool in the quarter-final, when Arsenal destroyed them at Anfield. 6-3. Nicely threaded through. Oh, it's right across the face of goal. Fabregas just missing the far post. Well, a lovely interplay here with Justin Hoyt and Fabregas. Again, goes, goes round Ballack like he doesn't exist, and he is inches away. Look, unbalances Ballack, gets the shot in. To be fair to check, if it had been on target, he might just have got a touch to that. Had the far side covered, and Fabregas inches away he really has led this young Arsenal side so so well this afternoon Drogba wins the header Traore for Diaby Danielson Balak gets a foot on it quite fairly now Bridge immediately tries to feed Robin that's a great touch by Robin He's teasing and tormenting Traore, and when he goes for goal, when there might have been a better option, trying to lift it into that far corner. But that was absolutely fabulous football. His first touch is wonderful. Oh, it's a fantastic ball from Wayne Bridge in the first place. Lovely touch for the outside of his foot. Traore is always struggling now. He's going to come back onto his better left foot. And to be fair, Drogba's at the far post there. A little dink to the far post might have been a better idea, but certainly. As far as Robin's concerned, he just wants to get at Traore every single time he can get that ball. Balak to Cavallo. Nicely touched into Shevchenko. He's overrun it. Sendros was in with a strong challenge. And here's Diaby. Turns into space. Good strong run, he's going to pick up a free kick here. That's Diara's turn to be in trouble. It's another caution. Yeah, and quite right again. He's on a tremendous run here, DRB. He really is strong, powerful. He's only got one thought in his mind. And here, Diara just comes right across the face of him. Quite rightly, A free kick, B yellow card. Just to underline the youth in the Arsenal side even further, Diaby's only 20 years of age, French under-19 world champion. It's a long way back from the earlier free kick, which Baptista took. This is teed up for Toure. Walker. Spins out to Shevchenko. He's not blessed with great pace. Hessian, Lampard. And he'll be picked off by Triori. Now, what can he do galloping forward? Oh, he was partially blocked there by Diara. Here's Robin. It's about a pass back to Peter Czech, thinks better of it. 
Robin. Lampard. Fabregas trying to get at him. Torreo got a foot on it. And here's John Terry. He's not overexerting himself. This is Essien. Robin. Just skips over Traore. Lampard's offside. Flags go out. Worrying early signs in this second half for Arsenal, Ray. Yeah, when they're being attacked, and obviously where Robin is on this right-hand side, having to go at the young Traore, but to, to be fair, they did really well there, Arsenal. As soon as Robin came back on his inside onto his left foot, they moved up a couple of yards, leaving the Arsenal striking force in offside positions and eliminated the danger straight away. But, but although they've looked a little bit vulnerable down uh, Chelsea's right-hand side, they've also put some promising moves together themselves and have tested... Chelsea defensively at the start of this game as well. Drogba makes a break down the middle. Senderos with the header. This is Shevchenko for Chelsea. Essien. Lampard. There's definitely a, a ball on there. Slip between the defenders to get Drogba through. Just too much pace on the delivery from Balak. Chelsea coming into this final, having suffered just one defeat in their last 22 games in all competitions. As Diaby comes striding forward for Arsenal. Terry, who dealt with it at the back. Diaby winning the shoulder to shoulder with Ali Adier. Cavalio. Ballon. German player hasn't stamped his personality on the, the final as yet. Robin already has in this second half. It went down very theatrically. He's going to get a, a corner, not a free kick. Well, it was a clumsy challenge, and I think <laughs> Robin has been renowned for throwing himself around, but I think on this occasion you can see Traore right across him. It is a free kick. Linesman is two yards away and doesn't make any decision. So Chelsea with this corner, still one apiece. The half-time substitute, Robin will take it. Thumbs up there from the Chelsea player to the supporters. Chance here! They haven't cleared it! Oh! And... John Terry, who went in bravely then to try and head that, looks as if he's out cold. He took, a terrible, he took a terrible kick in the mouth there. They're worried, oh, they're worried that he swallowed his tongue, I think. He's totally out. Everybody's getting on there as quickly as they possibly can. He's not moving there at all. It, it was the boot of Abu Diaby that uh, caught John Terry, and there's urgent gesticulations here to get treatment on. I've never seen a player go down and be absolutely spark out like that before. Well, I have in the past, and it is very, very worrying. I mean, that's typical John Terry. Um, he's, he's literally thrown himself at the ball, I think he's got a goal-scoring opportunity. But in doing so, you know, quite right, the ball was there to be cleared. Arsenal player tried to clear the ball, and unfortunately caught him smack in the mouth and just laid him straight out. And it's, it's a horrible sight for, you know, to see, you know, anybody that's played the game, anybody that's watched the game, to somebody laid out that. It is horrible, and somebody as, as wholehearted as, as John is, you know, for me, John has not been fully fit when he's played here today, but he's led the team, he's done what he's had to do, he's got exposed a couple of times that he's not quite fit, but that typifies John Terry as a captain in terms of he can see a chance to, to win some silverware for his team and throws body and soul on it, doesn't even worry about whether he can get injured or not, but gets a serious, serious injury around the face. The ball was pretty high, but Diaby was in his rights to try and win it. It's inside the six-yard box in his penalty area. It was a, a purely accidental contact, but uh, it doesn't look good for John Terry. It doesn't look good for Chelsea. They've already started to get uh, John Mikel, the 
19-year-old Nigerian ready on the touchline to come on as a substitute, which will presumably mean that Essien would drop back to central defence alongside Cavallio. But how worrying is this for England as well, Ray? Well, of course it is, but the most important thing is it's, it's John Terry himself. Never mind England at this moment in time. You know, they're giving him oxygen, which is always a, a, a bad sign in terms of it is a very serious injury when you get given oxygen when you're on the pitch. And, uh, you know, we're all sat up here hoping... We know it's serious, we just hope it's not as serious as it, as it may well be because uh, our thoughts are with him and the last thing that's certainly on my mind is at this moment is will he play for England in three or four weeks? You know, we want John Terry to be OK. Well, there's no shortage of medical help for John Terry. Who will clearly take uh, no further part in this Carling Cup final, having surprised everyone with his determination to be included, having picked up an injury four days ago. You can see the look of the RB as well. He's been on his knees alongside John Terry all the time this treatment's been going on. He stood up there looking down at him there, you know. He didn't mean that. It was a ball to be won by two committed players. Unfortunately, John Terry's come off the worst, and he'll, the RB's looking at that situation now, thinking, oh, God, I wish I hadn't done that, you know. But he had to protect the goal. John Terry could only see scoring the goal. You look at Peter Cech there as well, you know, he's had a, he's wearing that headband for a particular reason, he's had a similar injury to the face, you know, he's fractured his skull in a challenge similar around the six-yard box in yeah. terms of that's where injuries happen, that's where commitment from players are. A lot of times, and most of the time, there's no maliciousness in it, whatever, it's just part of the game and it's, uh, it's not nice, but it happens. Well, this is a, a long delay for the treatment to John Terry, who has been in the wars in his last two matches. Stretch it off in the Champions League match against Porto with a, an ankle injury. But this looks much more serious. It doesn't even look as if... The, John has actually regained consciousness, he still hasn't moved. No, they've got a neck brace on him, everything. He's had oxygen, the neck brace on, just in case there's any damage there. But you saw his head go back, there was, you know, when the ball when he made contact with his boot. As I was say, when you still see the RB stood there, he's in shock himself, because it's the last thing in the world he would wanted to have done to anybody. Well, it casts a shadow over this Carling Cup final, which has been absolutely absorbing from kick-off between the youngsters of Arsenal and the Chelsea full squad, the international squad that's been assembled with the, the money of Roman Abramovich, the open checkbook which has seen the club carry an annual loss over the last two seasons of, two seasons of more than £200 million. Pounds. It was really quite extraordinary. And uh, there is... Steve McLaren, the England manager, who may well be heading down to the dressing room area to check on the condition of John Terry. No, I'm sure he will be, because, uh, you know, Steve's close to his captain, John, and, uh, you know, I'm sure he'll be straight down the dressing room and, uh, and see what the problem is. We've just seen the physio talking to, sort of talking there, just to uh, Jose Mourinho, explaining what the situation is, and... The two of them looked very, very glum when it was being explained to him. And it's nice to see, Ray, that it's both sets of supporters who are applauding John Terry off the field. Arsenal as well as Chelsea. Yes, that's, that's always great to see. But I think the whole stadium realised what an honest player John Terry is and how committed he is to his club. Um, and nobody, no matter if you're any sort of decent supporter, you would not want to see John Kip Terry carried off in any game, never mind a cup final. So, John Terry off to the dressing room and, and more treatment, and on comes John Mikel, 19-year-old Nigerian, to play in central midfield with Michael Essien reverting to central defence alongside Cavallio. If we get any news from the dressing room of John Terry's condition, we will, of course, bring it to you. Here's Ballack. It's picked off 
by Almunia, who has played in every League Cup tie this season for Arsenal. Well, the rain's really coming down now, and uh, that's going to make what was quite a slippery pitch even worse. And uh, here's Robin, who's now gone over to that left side, finding himself plenty of room, chipped in for Drogba. Arsenal were quicker to the ball than the Chelsea striker. Here's Diaby, how much has his commitment and concentration been affected by that injury to Terry? Baptista held it because Walcott was clearly offside. Walcott trying to get the better of Bridge. And he does. And he gets in the cross. Halladier couldn't get tall enough, but he'll be picked up by Diaby. Danielson. Fabregas. Hoyt. And now Lampard for Chelsea. Shevchenko. Robin has gone over to the other side to test Hoyt. Kept the ball in play. Good ball to Shevchenko. Ture comes across strongly and he needed to. Chelsea's corner. Well, Robin obviously has made a difference to, to Chelsea playing on both sides now. Pace and power can go off both sides. Nice ball into Shevchenko there, but just couldn't get a finish in. Robin takes the corner. Almunia stays on his line. Well, he's signalling the Arsenal goalkeeper that the ball had actually curled out of play, but the officials haven't agreed. And Robin can come in on this one, but Walcott was quicker. Fabregas. Space opening up for him as Walcott takes Wayne Bridge away. Messi and happy to keep it in play with uh, no Arsenal player breathing down his neck. Lampard. DR. Lampard. Bridge couldn't get there, it will be an Arsenal throw. Arsene Wenger has decided to make a change which seemed inevitable. Traore is replaced by Ebue. And all that will mean is, uh, as we mentioned before, that uh, Justin Hoyt will come over into the left-back position and Abuya will go on at, at right back there. Certainly, uh, you know, Abuya is very, very aggressive in terms of loves to get forward. I think they've also got a problem with the with the RB as well. He looks like he's got a problem from something, and they might need to make another substitution. And that's Kleb who's coming over now as well. So they may need another make quick substitution there. Lampard for Chelsea. To Diara threads it through for Drogba, whose goal side of Senderos. Saved by Almunier, but he's grateful that no blue shirt was coming in on it because it got two yards away from him. Ali Adier lost his balance. The pitch slippy to start with, and the rain just eased off a little bit at the moment. Shevchenko into Drogba. It's Fabregas. Well, at the moment, well, Arsenal are down to ten men at the moment because the Rob has actually had to go off. He's not even able to continue. So Arsenal are desperate to get the substitutes on at the moment. Yes, they want to get the ball out of play, don't they? Here's Robin. Slips it through for Balak, who goes down theatrically, but. Picked up cleanly by Almunier. But still, Arsenal can't make that change, and now they can. To Arsene Wenger's relief, and it is Alexander Kleb who will come on. So, Arsenal making two substitutions in quick succession.
mean, that second one obviously was made through an injury. There was, you know, Diaby was playing extremely well, uh, but obviously got some sort of injury, foot or ankle injury, it looked like, and they've had to now bring on Claire will be a, a straight swap, will play out on this left-hand side. Baptista giving Ali Adier a chase, and uh, they've got a corner out of it. Went out off Michael Essien. Well, there's some debate about whether Toure or Senderos should go forward, and if that, in the end it's Senderos, Toure stays back in the centre circle, as Danielson waits to take the corner. Easy catch for Pidacek, a you know, quick ball out to try and find Robin. Fabregas, Fleb, just on as a substitute. Bounces off Diara, finds Baptista. Walcott, they're inside the Chelsea penalty area. Oh, headed out by Diara. De Nielsen. Would have needed some extra special skill to really get anything on that that would have tested Peter Cech. Well, it's just a side foot there. He's never going to get, even if he gets it on target, he's never going to get enough power to beat this man here, Peter Cech, who's. Uh, you know, he's shown in this game he's made a couple of excellent saves and also his general goalkeeper in terms of dealing with crosses, etc., has been wonderful. Senderos to Hoyt, now at left back. There's Cleb. Squeezes it through to De Nielsen. There's Fabregas, that's aimed at Walcott. Drops over his right shoulder. And goes out of play for a Chelsea throw. We're inside the last 20 minutes of this Carling Cup final. We're heading to extra time at the moment. Here's Mikel. Wayne Bridge. Lampard. We get into the state of the game, Ray, where both teams are frightened of making a mistake. Well, yes, we are getting to that stage, and also we're getting to that stage which happened in the first half, that Arsenal start, that young Arsenal side started so well in the opening 20, 25 minutes, and then in that last 15 or 20, Chelsea's experience and extra strength started to take over. And we're now getting into that spell again, where Arsenal have had good spells, but now it looks like you know, that Chelsea are just starting to gain a little bit more possession of the ball. And Chelsea looking to win this... Carling Cup, the League Cup for what would be the fourth time in their history 1965, 1998 and then 2005 they lifted the trophy Fabregas keeps his balance gets it out to Walcott this is Fabregas again dispossessed Well, in fact, it's going to be a, a free kick to Chelsea for the challenge of Fabregas. Told to calm down by Howard Webb. Well, Arsenal have only won three of the last eight games they've played in all competitions. One Premiership match, one FA Cup tie, and one League Cup tie. Got the sun breaking through at the moment. Here's Lem. Too many Chelsea players in front of him. Didn't reach Hoyt. She's Essien. Ballant. Mikel. Bridge, Robin, 
run at people ever since he came on. Lampard from distance. Oh, and he's hit the top of the crossbar. What quality from the highest scoring midfield player in Chelsea's history. Well, we haven't seen an awful lot of Frank in an attacking situation in this game, but that's what he's capable of. He's, when he gets 25 yards out, he's capable of scoring in any company. And we saw it dip in there over the top of Almunia, but it just wouldn't dip far enough to go into the roof of the net. net. 86 goals Frank Lampard has scored for Chelsea from midfield in 309 games. It's a, an astonishing record for a midfield player. Here's De Nielsen. Needs to be going the other way. And Baptista. Walcott. Arsenal's throw and they're preparing for their third substitution and it will be Emmanuel Adebayor who'll come on. Six foot three inch Tongan international. It'll be interesting to see who they bring off because I think Justin Hoyt is struggling at left back here as well. So um, it'll be very interesting to see who they take off for him. Is this Cavallio over the halfway line? Lampard didn't see a pass on. Just Mikel Lampard again. Poor ball for Balak to deal with, and he didn't. This is Walcott. Finds Fabregas. Kleb. Not a lot of space down that side, but here's Justin Hoyt. Thinks about having a shot, trying to tee it up for somebody. Toure comes from the back, it's a long way out. Lampard blocked it. Drogba. Diara. Haunted by Fabregas. And there's Essien. And it's poor by Essien, straight to Fled. And again, Carvalho comes to the rescue. How many times have we said that? Drogba. Ran straight into Senderos, doesn't get a free kick. How does he? Well, the referee's no. now blown the whistle. I think it's so that uh, the Chelsea men can have treatment. No, that's what it's for. It certainly wasn't a free kick. Howard Webb certainly crossed his arms there and said no free kick. It was just an accidental clash. And Drogba, you know, is uh, milking it a little bit, I think. And uh, they don't want to bring the, the uh, trainer on because they know that there's nothing serious about it. Gary Lewin, the, uh, the Arsenal physio, has run right the way around the pitch here to speak to, to Justin Hoyt because he's certainly carrying some sort of injury at the moment and it's whether he can actually play on with it or not. Yes, and it now looks as if uh, he's in some sort of radio or telephonic communication with the Arsenal dugout. Relaying the information that he's just picked up from Justin Hoyt. Senderos to Hoyt. Pleb. Ali Adier back to Pleb. Cavalio again. Arsenal have got them pressed here. Walcott on the overlap. Cut out by Bridge, it's a corner. That's been a great little competition over there on its own. Michael Bridge against uh, young Walcott. It's been a real good competition right the way through and uh, Walcott's had his moments and, and Bridge has defended well against him at, well, at times as well Fabregas will take the corner Senderos is up again from the back and this time Toure's come up as well and there is Toure it was a chance it was a fantastic chance he made a late run into the box was never picked up, he's in at that near post total free header he has to hit the target there Cavallio and Drogba, nobody near him. He has to hit the target. They won't get a better chance than that, I don't think. 12 minutes left in this second half, plus a fairly hefty length of time that will be added on for the long stoppage, the injury to John Terry. And then it'll be extra time. Here's Robin. 
chipped in left-footed to Shevchenko. He gallops out to retrieve the loose ball. Mikel out to Bridge. He's got a sweet left foot on him. That's aimed at Drogba. Well, Mounier covering well and quick distribution to Danielson. Recovers from his poor first touch and then rather aimlessly knocks it forward. Well, he was a little bit unfortunate there because Aladier started to spin out into this left-hand side there. Danielson looked down to play it and Aladier stopped running. And then he played the ball where he saw the original run and, of course, he hadn't, he hadn't completed it. I don't think either of these sides would really relish extra time. They've got busy periods coming up, haven't they? Still in four competitions, Chelsea second in the Premiership, Arsenal fourth. They've both got Champions League second leg ties looming on the horizon. Both still in the FA Cup. This is Arsenal's 45th game of the season. It's Chelsea's 44th. Came off the head of Toure. Sandros getting much contact on the ball, but maybe Arsenal now will make the change that they've been waiting to do so. Or will they? There's a, a warming coat around the shoulders of Adebayor. Bridge gets no distance on the header, taken off him. Oh, well. The decision is questioned, but it is going to be a Chelsea free kick. Did Baptista push him here? Yeah, maybe. Hand in the back. Just a little nudge. Yeah, he's had a. He's worked hard. He's worked hard, but he's, he has definitely tired in this last 10 or 15 minutes. And this is a good substitute to bring on. He's you no. Know, they call him the new canoe here, and certainly he has incredible uh, skills with his feet, considering the size of him. And uh, you know he could cause more problems now for Chelsea. So Ali Adier off, and on comes Adebayor. With just under 10 minutes to play, that'll be a free kick. Well, the game at Stamford Bridge in December was a 1-1 draw in the Premiership between these two sides. Flamini, who put Arsenal ahead. Essien with an equaliser for Chelsea with just six minutes left. On this occasion, both goals came in the first half. It's still one apiece in this Carling Cup final. And neither side able to make a, a second breakthrough in this second half. Here's Kleb. Arsenal with three substitutes now on. Mikel just got a foot on that. This is Bridge. Mikel. Diara. Ballet. Drogba, good touch first time from Drogba. Hasn't got sight of goal, but he squeezed it out to Shevchenko. Lampard, oh, taken off his toe by a great leap. Robin. Cavallo. Mikel. Chelsea have played it back into their own half and finally all the way back to the goalkeeper. <laughs> Launched downfield by Czech. Bridge. Robin pushed in the back by Abue. Free kick Chelsea. Getting dangerously close to that area of the game where if one side were to take the lead here, there'd be no time for the other side to come back at them. Frank Lampard to take it. Drogba and Balak 
and Shevchenko all on the edge of the penalty area. This is Schlepp. Danielson picked off by Essien. Out to Robin to run at Abue. Chipped in. Drogba gets a glancing header. And it's a wonderful goal by Drogba. And it puts Chelsea ahead with just over six minutes left. Plus whatever time he's added. And that's goal number 28 for the season for the Chelsea striker. Well, it, it was a fantastic header, but the quality of the cross made it easy for him. And the ball finishes up, Arsenal give it away here. And then we see Fabregas dive in, he's out of the game now. And then Robin looks up and the cross is superb. Loads of pace on it. All that Drogba needs to do is get across the front of his man and just get a glance on it. He gets across Senderos. Almunia no chance, but it's the quality of that ball from Aaron Robin there which makes it not easy, but certainly makes it a lot easier for Drogba there to actually direct that ball into the far corner of the net. What a season it is for the Premiership's top goal scorer. 16 goals in each of his two previous seasons for Chelsea. 16 goals in 41 appearances in those seasons. This is his 42nd appearance of the season. And he's got 28 already. Tremendous. And Chelsea, for the first time, have their noses in front. And the team, with all the experience now, have just got to see it out for these last five minutes or so, plus whatever is added on to become the Carling Cup winners. Well, Toure galloping forward, but there's going to be a free kick first. Yeah, Robin caught uh, Fabregas with a flailing arm there. I don't think it was malicious again, but certainly Aaron Robin did catch. As he goes past him, if you just watch there, his left arm comes out and catches him. Caught him on the chest, not the chin. Here is Fabregas, that's blocked by Drogba. Toure will come forward more often now with Arsenal trailing. Walcott move. Mm. Nothing in that that was going to test Almunia. And are Arsenal's youngsters about to be beaten, having given so much in pursuit of this trophy? They beat West Brom in the third round, they beat Everton at Goodison in the fourth round, and then Liverpool at Anfield 6-3 in the quarter-final, and they saw off Tottenham over two legs in the semi-final. But is Chelsea going to prove a step too far for them? Lampard tries to get it in. And this is Justin Hoyt. And Arsenal have got to get the ball forward quickly. The clock's running. Danielson. Walcott. Doesn't get past Bridge on this occasion. Who squeezes it up to Robin? He's just got Sevchenko running down this right side. Toure deals with him. Well, he's been as good at the back for Arsenal as Cavalio has been for Chelsea. Well, exactly. Uh, you know, Cavalio, we, we expect to, to perform as he does. He's been magnificent all year, particularly when John Terry's been out. And he's, you know, he's on the end of that ball again. But Toure for Arsenal, captain of the team, has captained them brilliantly, has marshaled the back four. Unfortunately, with that winning goal, what might well be the winning goal from Drogba, he just couldn't get high enough to head it. And, of course, when he missed it, Drogba got in front of Sendros and got it into the back of the net. And there, Bowie reacting angrily there to Robin going down for the free kick, which he's got, and it results in a yellow card for the Arsenal substitute, who was clearly claiming that uh, Robin had over-egged that. Howard Webb has given Chelsea the free kick just inside Arsenal's half. And the delight has gone from the faces of the Arsenal supporters. It's Chelsea who are in full voice, inching towards this Carling Cup victory. Almunia well, gets it downfield quickly. Up the chest of Adebayor. Going to be a free kick anyway to Chelsea. I see him taking one on the chin.
Well, there is a feeling in football that Arsenal have the, the best young squad in England and, and maybe the best young squad in Europe. But this has been a, a severe test for them against this very experienced Chelsea side. And there's Shevchenko! And he smashed that against the angle of post and bar. Well, we haven't seen a lot of him in this game, and I've been quite disappointed with him, but that just shows what he's got. Good header from Drogba, great strike, keeper no chance, and inches away from finishing this tie. Well, that would have uh, wrapped it up for Chelsea, 3-1. We're into the last few seconds of the 90. Baptista's there, but it was well taken by Pedicek. He makes those situations look so simple. His timing is excellent. Fabregas. Walcott couldn't deal with it. It will be a Chelsea throw. And they won't be in a great hurry to take it. But there will be, remember, a lot of time to add on. Arsenal will be keen to see a large number go up on the official's electronic clock when it is raised in a moment or two. It will give them heart, it will give them a lift, because they've got to get back on level terms. Baptista's underneath it, couldn't find Adebayo. Well, a minimum of seven minutes added time to be played. That's a massive amount of time, and that will give Arsenal a big lift. Well, again, it doesn't surprise us. I mean, John Terry was on the floor for some considerable time, so this game, you know, has still got life in it yet, and Arsenal will keep coming forward. Here's Hoyt into Adebayor. Corner. Well, surely Senderos and Ture will both be in there this time. Fabregas will take it. Senderos is there, he wants it placing on his head. Check comes and gets a very solid fist. Certainly it was aimed at Senderos. Danielson with the throw. Of course, uh, Arsenal have got to beware, not leaving the, the door open at the back in their anxiety to get an equaliser. It's Diara. Got pace to get away from Fabregas. And he's kept it in play as well, and he's found Shevchenko. Oh, good covering by Danielson. Clattered by Shevchenko, that will be a free kick. Well, it's a real cauldron now in the Millennium Stadium as Jose Mourinho's Chelsea edge towards victory. And think about another substitution. Yeah, so Mourinho will be trying to rub, run the clock down now, as simple as that. He, he doesn't see his side giving away a lead like this in the last five minutes of a game. So he'll just uh, try and waste as much time as he can, make one or two little tactical substitutions, but certainly they won't go all out to get the third goal now. They'll look to win this game 2-1. Toure into Adebayor is just offside. Flag had gone up. Ooh, very, very tight. Looks well, as if his feet are absolutely level with those of. Uh, you have to say that was a harsh decision. I think that was there was no space there, and I think that that he was onside. Okay. I'm not sure he knew the whistle had gone, he missed the opportunity, but I'm certainly not sure he was offside there. Maybe it's as well that he didn't find the net, otherwise there would have been an argumentative post-mortem. Headed down by Drogba, Shevchenko. You can see that uh, Chelsea are just oozing confidence at the moment. Here's Shevchenko, nobody to cut it back to, and he's uh, considered a free kick as he, he wrestled there with Danielson. Told to calm down. Well, Chelsea's previous victories in this tournament came in 1965 when they beat Leicester City over two legs. 
Oh, and there's a trouble here involving Toure and Mikel and Lampard, and this is very unpleasant, and you don't want to see this, but there's players piling in there, and this is a very sad end to what's been an exit. Even Jose Mourinho has come onto the field to remonstrate with the players. No, this is absolutely stupid. It was over something and nothing as well. Well, how is Howard Webb going to sort all this out? Both managers are on to calm things down. And there are still players and Lampard and Fabregas there in each other's faces. No, Torre went after Lampard, something that's gone on. We've got a, we've got a player laid down flat out on the pitch. I think it might have been Bridge who's been flattened by somebody. And it's just such a sad end to what has been an excellent game of football and Mikel and Torre have got involved in something which they didn't need to and then everybody else has got involved and it really is not a sight we want to see at any time never mind in a prestige cup final like this being shown all around the world well with the two managers on and players involved in that unseemly fracas Howard Webber stood to one side the referee who's been on the premier list since 2003 and who's on the short list to be a referee at the European Championships in 2008 and he is going to have to adjudicate and he's giving himself a long time to think about this and send players away, he's got Toure standing to his left he's got Mikel on his right who were the initial protagonists I would be surprised if he doesn't send the two of them off because they both lifted their arms to each other they started it all and then everybody else piled in it is a red card for Mikel so the Chelsea substitute who came on in the second half is dismissed by Howard Webb and it's a red card too for the Arsenal player Colo Toure as you said Ray both of them are sent off by Howard Webb the fourth and the fifth red cards that he's flourished in English football this season I'm not sure it might be the only one well, he's still standing there, the referee, with his hands on his hips, and he still wants people to come towards him. There are all sorts of other things that the, the assistant linesman or assistant referee will have seen. Well, the two assistants are David Babsky, who'd been on the near side here, and the one on the far side was Darren Cannon, and it is another red card for Adebayor, who's still arguing the toss. Well, as I say, somebody flattened Bridge in the melee now it could well have been him i didn't see that but certainly somebody has and he has to go and he's not helping his cause one little bit by having the argument there gary lewin running onto the pitch needs to get him off but it's only going to make matters worse so three red cards at the end of what have been a thoroughly entertaining and an absorbing carling cup final two arsenal players oh and still adamayor is arguing and he's absolutely furious, and this is very unseemly and very unpleasant. And there'll be further repercussions from this. And he doesn't want to be consoled by anybody, and that's Thierry Henry yeah. who's come down and that's to his help big, out. That's his big mate. His big mate's Henry, he's taking him down the tunnel there, and he needs to be sorted out. Well, hang on a minute, there's another card coming out here. One of the... Referee's assistance has had another word, and it's a yellow card for Frank Lampard, and it's a yellow card for Fabregas, who were also involved in the fracas, but not quite so seriously. Well, I make that now seven yellow cards in this match and three red. Well, it hasn't been that sort of game. It hasn't, but we did see beforehand that Howard Webb does have a tendency. But to be fair to him, in that situation there, there had to be strong action taken. The players lost control of it. Certainly, it, it was started by Mikel and Torre, and, and it just went on from there. And uh, it was a sad, sad ending to what has been an excellent game of football. And when we resume, it will be nine-man Arsenal against ten-man Chelsea. And goodness knows where we are in terms of amount of time left to play. And sadly, this final will be making headlines tomorrow for all the wrong reasons, because up until that point, it had been an excellent match. 
of course, it's not over yet, is it? Arsenal could still get back on level terms, although with nine men. And uh, Chelsea are going to make a substitution, which will run off the clock a bit. Yeah. Shevchenko, is it, or is it Bridge who's going to no, go off? Shevchenko, it's going off. Shevchenko will be replaced. And on comes Kalou. Has the dust settled? Can we now take the free kick? Peace and order are restored. And we're minus three players. Extraordinary. And Fabregas, who was just cautioned, takes the free kick. Senderos didn't get there. Kleb. No room for a cross, looks back for help and there isn't any. It succeeds in sliding it through to Baptista, here's Schleb. Danielson got a foot on it. And Diara just launches it downfield. It's difficult to tell which... Uh, Set of supporters are whistling at the moment. I think it's probably the Chelsea supporters wanting the final whistle rather than whistles of derision aimed at the referee. Put out by Kalou. Arsenal with the throw. They've taken it quickly. Fabregas. Danielson wants it. Looking for a free kick there, which they haven't got. And it's Cavalio who brings it out. Gone out of play on the far side. There might have been a free kick for the challenge on Cavalio by Fabregas. And look at Jose Mourinho. Calm down, he's saying. Calm down. I mean, it's still difficult. I'm still in shock that what's actually happened in the last five minutes because it's never been that sort of a game. It's been a, a well-contested game with very few ill-timed tackles in it at all. And all of a sudden, out of nothing, it's all gone off. Well, we haven't had extra time, but we're into the 101st minute of this cup tie at the moment, the Carling Cup final. Arsenal will push forward here, Almunier comes out of his area to take the free kick. Aimed at Baptista. Kleb. But extraordinary if Arsenal with nine men could get an equaliser. Lampard has just kicked that away, it's a free kick. Well, you can't take your eyes off this match for a second. And Almunier is jogging forward in a last desperate attempt to get Arsenal back level. The goalkeeper up to join the attack. They've left the net to the right completely empty. And just Kalou standing in the centre circle. Fabregas will take the free kick. And first of all, Howard Webb has to deal with a bit of pushing and shoving. Fabregas chips it in, it just needs a flick. It was Essien with the defensive clearing header. And there's the final whistle! And Chelsea have come from behind with two goals from Didier Drogba to win the Carling Cup final. But it will be remembered for the scenes in the last few minutes rather than the quality of the football and the goals that won it. As a handshake between the two managers, Theo Walcott is devastated having put Arsenal ahead after 12 minutes. But it was the Premiership's top goal scorer, Didier Drogba, who had the final word, equalising before half-time. And then with the glancing header in the 83rd minute, to win it for Chelsea. Frank Lampard will lead the celebrations, but there will be a lengthy inquest. No, there certainly will, and I say it's disappointing because it has been an excellent cup final. To be fair to Arsenal, young side that they were, there's young Theo Walcott, but he couldn't believe he scored the goal he got, which actually put him into the lead. And at times, you know, the Arsenal youngsters have played some super football, Fabregas, was fantastic in the middle of the field for them, he really led them well. 
Carlo Torri at the back was also superb as well for them. But at the end, you know, unfortunately, the experience and obviously the goal scoring ability of Drogba won it for, for Chelsea. And it was always a fear, I think, for most neutral people here that the experience of Chelsea might just be too much for Arsenal in the end. But Arsenal can be, their Arsenal youngsters can be proud of the way they played, apart from what happened in that last few minutes, because that's unacceptable in football. And I'm sure, as you rightly say, there will be lots more discussions about that after this game's finished in terms of why it happened, how it happened, because it happened out of nothing. It, yes, there was a free kick, but it, there was nothing bad about it. It was a mistimed tackle, and all of a sudden, everything went off. And uh, obviously, we're not down on the pitch, so we don't know if there's been a lot of banter being going on on the pitch there, which we don't know about. But certainly, in terms of foul tackles and vicious play, etc., etc., it was bad enough that John Terry went off with a terrible injury in the second half. But for the way it's ending, in a messy way it has done here, does put a cloud over what has been, apart from that, a great day. Well, we did make much of the fact at the start of the game, Ray, that it was a clash of different philosophies. Arsenal with what's considered to be the best generation of young players in England, maybe in Europe, sticking with them after they'd got them into this Carling Cup final. Chelsea playing their first team, all the big-name players, all the stars, all the quality players assembled from around the world at the, well, millions and millions of pounds expenditure with the checkbook of Roman Abramovich, the Russian oligarch. And in the end, they have prevailed and persevered. But let's just recap for you. Walcott put Arsenal ahead. Drogba's two goals have won it, though, for Chelsea. And in that uh, disgraceful flurry at the end, Arsenal had Colo Toure, their captain, and Emmanuel Adebayor, who'd come on as a substitute, both sent off. And John Mikel, the Nigerian, who'd come on as a substitute for Chelsea, he was sent off too. In addition to that, we counted at least seven yellow cards flourished by Howard Webb in a game that ought to be remembered for the quality of the football and the bravery of Arsene Wenger who's never lifted this League Cup trophy. Three Premiership titles, four FA Cups, seven trophies in his 11 seasons with Arsenal, but never the League Cup trophy. Brave enough to put out the youngsters and go for it against the Chelsea side, who are sitting in nine points now behind Manchester United at the top of the Premiership. But in the end, the, the dream has died here in the Millennium Stadium in, in Cardiff, and in the end, the youngsters weren't quite good enough. Well, I think, you know, qu not quite good enough is, is probably maybe not the right thing to say. That Yes, they are good enough, they're not experienced enough at this moment. And, and strength-wise, you know, and you think they started with two 17-year-olds in a cup final. And certainly Walcott scored a, a fantastic goal and, and it was a tremendous battle with Bridge throughout the 90 minutes. The young boy Triori showed some fantastic skills going forward, created a lot of things, but obviously was exposed a little bit defensively. Um, as I say, that Danielson, another 19-year-old who acquitted himself in the middle of the field extremely well as well. So I think it, it wasn't not good enough, it was not enough experience and not enough physical strength as the game wore on. Whereas Chelsea, and we've seen it so many times before in the last two or three seasons, at times, they're not the most exciting side to watch, but they are efficient and they do win games. And in, certainly for me, in Peter Cech, somebody who made one fantastic save in the first half and made a couple of other important saves, but his general goalkeeping gives the, the defence in front of them so much confidence that they're, they know when they get in front of it in a game that they're going to be very difficult to beat. The other, the other point, obviously, as I mentioned before, is that when all this melee is finished and the trophy has been delivered and that's going to be fantastic for the Chelsea fans over to my right hand side let's just hope in that dressing room or in the hospital now that John Terry is okay well this will be the what well, it is the fourth trophy that Jose Mourinho has won as the Chelsea manager it was the first trophy that he lifted when he moved to Stamford Bridge in 2005. They beat Liverpool in the final, three goals to two after extra time. Drogba was one of the goal scorers on that occasion. 
since then they've won the Premiership, they're the defending Premiership uh, champions, they've won it twice, tremendous record that he has as a manager, he's also of course won the Champions League with Porto. And if you're looking for stars in this Chelsea side, well, Cavalio at the back was absolutely outstanding. Although there were always question marks about John Terry's fitness, Cavalio with that wonderful ability to, to be in the right place at the right time and to sniff out danger before it happens and just to step forward and win the ball on the edge of his own penalty area and clear it. And at the other end, when you've got a striker in form like Didier Drogba, well, he's always going to get goals for you. And two today for Drogba to take his total to 28 in 42 games this season has won it for Chelsea as Mr Howard Webb and his linesmen and the fourth official are presented with their mementos by Mr Simon Davies the marketing director for Coors Brewery and Adam Williamson the chief operating officer for the Football League and waiting in the players tunnel is the Carling Cup a very dejected Arsenal who received their runners-up medals. I'm looking at some of these young players going past there. You know, it says Fabregas or the Sabre is fantastic. But you look at all these young players, and yes, this is a, a disappointing moment for them, but it's also a great moment for them. They've actually performed in a cup final, and I'm sure that Arsene Wenger there will be thinking to himself, OK, we haven't quite had enough this afternoon, but these players will be back again in years to come, and they'll be picking up winners' medals, not losers' medals. And Arsene Wenger has failed to beat Chelsea in the last seven meetings, three draws, and now four defeats. Well, one or two Arsenal players have stayed, Arsenal supporters have stayed to watch the presentation, but the left-hand side of this stadium has rapidly emptied. And here comes the trophy, accompanied onto the pitch by members of the Welsh Regiment. first major final played in this stadium English final that is in 2001 was the Football League Cup final won on that occasion by Liverpool who drew 1-1 with Birmingham after extra time and then won it 5-4 on penalties it's now the Carling Cup and it belongs to Chelsea Jose Mourinho, 44 years of age, comes forward for his medal. Handshake there with Jack Taylor, the Football League ambassador. Didier Drogba leads the Chelsea players forward. Uh, I think uh, Drogba also has been awarded the man of the match as well, which you'd expect for the man who scored the two goals, and of course the second one being the winning goal to win that trophy. And receiving that trophy, the Alan Hardacre trophy for man of the match, awarded by Jack Taylor OBE, Football League ambassador to Didier Drogba. Michael Ballack's first medal in English football, Wayne Bridge will be pleased to be a cup winner as well. Not always certain of a first team place at Chelsea. There were seven players in this Chelsea side who had winners' medals in 2005. Pedicek, Makaleli, Cavallio, Frank Lampard, Drogba, John Terry, of course, who isn't here at the end to receive his medal. Now Frank Lampard. 
Chelsea are the winners of the Carling Cup final after an explosive final here at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. Chelsea now parade the trophy in front of their supporters. A final quick word from, from you, Ray. Well, it's been, you know, for 85 minutes, it was a thoroughly enjoyable afternoon. Some great football, particularly from Arsenal. Chelsea have won it with two excellent goals from Drogba. Um, the last five minutes, we've talked enough about, and I'm sure we'll hear more about in the next week or so. But uh, with the exception of that last five minutes, I've had a thoroughly enjoyable afternoon. And what will this do to Chelsea's confidence in their battle to close that nine-point gap behind Manchester United at the top of the Premiership? We shall see from the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff with me, Tony Gubber. It's a very good afternoon to you, and we hope you've enjoyed this presentation of the 47th League Cup Final. <laughs>